Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of Let's Play. Today we are taking a look at KRD Productions' The Last War, a Forbidden Psalm trench war, dark gritty horror game um, by Kev at uh, KRD Designs. Now this is a, man, this is quite the game, um, and I have a very, uh, I think, uh, fun selection of models and terrain, thanks to Knucklebones Minis, and of course, uh, Matt himself made some of this um, trench work stuff that's gonna be on the board, uh, and then I got to like build and paint all of his really cool models that are available through his Patreon and my mini factory. Uh, my patrons uh, also will get a 15% discount on my mini factory, which is pretty cool if you want to pick this stuff up. And I'll link all of the books and stuff in the um, description below as well. So you can check this out for yourself. But this is a solo cooperative or head-to-head -head game. Uh, like all the Forbidden Psalm designs, it runs on the same engine. Uh, so if you've watched all of the Forbidden Psalm like campaign stuff, like 30 plus games, um, this 10 game saga is going to run roughly the same sort of design with some small alterations for the monsters to make them feel a little bit more ranged attacky if they have guns, not just all rushing towards you. Um, and with its own unique set of like, um, I guess like terrain rules, like the environmental rules, uh, and of course warband creation and stuff as well. So I'll show you the table, I'll show you these guys, uh, like beautiful models from uh, Knucklebones and we'll get this underway. So here I am set up to play The Last War. Now, for those of you who haven't played a Forbidden Psalm game before, um, they are played on a two by two-ish recommended size table um, with whatever beautiful terrain you want to put down on it and whatever models you want to use. It's all completely terrain and miniature agnostic. But what that means is um, you have like the opportunity to really go to town and make beautiful set pieces like this. Uh, so my models, of course, are being um, uh, well, not supply because I painted them myself, but uh, they were um, all 3D prints or my mini factory prints uh, from Knucklebone Miniatures. Matt is a fantastic sculptor. Does a ton of things for everything from like dark fantasy through into um, like World War One, World War Two style trench warfare models, and even some sort of like punk sci-fi uh, Rogue Trader esque minis um, and classics or like interpretations of old art that are fantastic. This is my starting warband right here. It's the Ragged Bones. This was the the, the name I rolled up for them, um, and uh, they are basically lost in this endless trench war. Uh, where the war is long over, no one remembers why they're fighting, and everyone's just trying to escape the fog. There is a poisonous gas completely surrounding the, the endless battlefields that don't allow anyone to escape. Um, and everyone is sort of either eking out an existence or trying to get away. That is the general sort of like setting of the last war. Uh, so my five models here, I've, I've rolled up names for them. I did new names because when I had the uh, the GMG review, the, the sort of like uh, breakdown of the book, I usually would roll up my warband during that. But then I had models I wanted to use. And so I had to kind of change it out because I didn't want to... I wanted to start with the models first. Basically with a game like this, start with the models you like, convert your models, and go from there to like what they are. So I re-rolled everything. And the Ragged Bones are led by Redacted Specifics. That's literally his name. He doesn't know what his name is. Um, and he is like the uh, the nameless officer, basically. Uh, his flaw is he's forgetful, which I love that I rolled that after I rolled his name. Because it means that he literally doesn't know who he is. He's just this officer that's so shell-shocked and traumatized that he doesn't, he doesn't have an identity anymore. And everyone just kind of follows him by rote. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, his feat is that he's well read. He has a random manuscript, and the manuscript he found is an artillery strike. So this guy can call in basically like guns from above and blow things up. He's he's sort of like a weird mental wizard, which I think is amazing. Um, and the model like fit him appropriately. He's just armed with a pistol. He's got a knife as well, and everyone's got um, scavenged armor to start off with because it's free. Just they all have one armor, but it reduces their agility by one. Um, and then my second crew member, he's the Air Mechanic 80, so he's just a weird... I mean, it makes sense he's an Air Mechanic, he's got a giant fuel drum on his back that he's turned into a flamethrower. Um, and he's my specialist, so he has the um, the, the Flame Trooper upgrade, as a specialist, costs 5 resources. And then um, his feat is he can ignore all burning effects, no matter what. Uh, but he also um, rolled up the Vampires Don't Exist, he doesn't make morale checks for, for scary things. Uh, but his flaw is that he's jammed. His weapon always screws up, which makes sense because it's just a fuel drum on his back uh, that may or may not explode at any given time. Uh, so he can't unjam his flamethrower, but I'm fine with that. Um, and then that's all he's got with his improvised armor is the flamethrower. Uh, we've got Putnik Red. Uh, Putnik Red is a... F his flaw is that he is... Um 
has flatulophobia, so he always wears a gas mask. This guy can't take it off. Um, and then he has a pistol and bayonet, uh, which may be upgraded to two pistols and bayonets eventually when I get the, the, the resources to do it. Um, and then his uh, his feet is carrot cake. He just ignores the dark. He can see in the dark. I don't know why carrot cake lets him do that, but cool. He just ignores darkness, period. Uh, we've got Ruleful the Wounded in the back there with the rifle. Um, he's basically, he's found an old like musket and he's just using it as a club. It's a rusted rifle. Uh, he's got broken. He's minus one to all tests, uh, but he's got zigzag as well. He's minus three to hit with shooting. So even though he's broken, he's real good at not getting shot anymore. He's clearly been shot so many times that he just, he's all jacked up from it. Um, and so that's, so that's Cavill the Lead Slinger, my bad. He's got that. Uh, and he's the one with the, um, the trench club actually back there. Uh, the guy with the, oh, sorry, he's got Baldrick. He always carries a turnip, so he has one less equipment still behind slot as his, um, his, uh, like his, uh, uh, what should I call it? His like flaw, but then his feet is he's got a cunning plan. He can always escape. So sorry, this is the one that's broken um, and zigzags. This is the one that uh, has a cunning plan, so he can always get out of there. And um, and it is, but it has to turn up for some reason. He just carries one less thing. Our force is picked and a collection of models for opposing models and like character pieces. We're gonna go to the rules of engagement. So set up first, pick a scenario. We're gonna go through these in order because in order they tell the story of um, the last war and trying to escape from the fog. So our first one is called, oh geez, I should have marked this. <laughs> the dead have seen the end of war. The quartermaster, who is the only person that we can trade with in this area, raised an eyebrow when you asked him for work in exchange for supplies. Thinking deeply, he scratched his large chin. There's one thing you can do to prove your worth. He tells you of a cache of supplies he's been trying to get his hands on for some time. However, a group of soldiers who refuse to accept the war is over guard the area. So that's our trench works here. And you can see there are one, two, three crates on the battlefield. It is to bring back the supplies and earn the quartermaster's trust. For each crate of supplies returned, gain 20 resources resources, and for each slain loyal, gain 10 resources. Players take it in turns uh, to place two supply groups at least um, six inches onto the board. An additional crate is placed in the center of the battlefield. Players should place the train as per train rules. So because we're playing solo, we'll use the following modification. Solo play, place three supply crates in loyal. Once you create a model with a free equipment slot can pick it up as per a free action. Supply crates can also be looted as per loot marker rules, which is cool. Um, so we can, and we can do both of them, which is awesome. Uh, deployment, players select a board edge and place an, uh, put models in three inches of it. In solo play, uh, you may place models in either deployment area. And then each supply crate is guarded by a loyal. On round three, a random hostile is drawn by the sounds of battle. Automatically ends on the sixth round. So now every loyal has seven hit points and a morale of nine, um, but everyone has different equipment. They have one random armor and equipment piece. They never run ammo. Um, and they have a gas mask and a ration. You don't know what their attacks and armor are because obviously we have to roll it up. Themselves loyal to the cause. Soldiers who refuse to accept the war is over. They attack everyone else on sight. You're either the enemy or deserters. Three random weapons. 37, 51, and 11. So 11 is going to be a dart. 37 is going to be a bayonet. And 51 is going to be a dud grenade armor and see who it looks like it's going to be the most like. 3d8, so the darts has a day field body shield with no armor. Uh, the grenade has eight waxed cloth and the bayonet has five plated armor. Uh, so actually we'll just change plated armor to him then. He has painted armor, he's got wax cloth, he has nothing. We deploy each one next to a crate, so the darts is four, so uh, one, two, three, four. And then we'll, we'll just d2 it, so the next one, one, he'll be in the middle. And this guy, well, automatically here. I don't know why I rolled. Yeah, well, so it's done. Now it's deployment, and we need to deploy anywhere we want within three of an edge. Now we don't have a ton of uh, shooting because obviously we are somewhat in trouble. We don't want the wax cloth guy to get flamethrowered, so uh, we're gonna try and I think put you over here. Air mechanic 80. Uh, Mr. Nameless is just gonna sit in the bunker, I guess. Uh, you've only got a melee weapon, and you're slow. Back up the flamethrower. And then Mr. Pistol, uh, Putnik Red is going to, I guess, follow the boss. So, oh, and we have to determine our condition, sorry, which is basically what is the battlefield effect like? Roll a D8, it's gonna be a three, deep fog. All ranges are reduced by three inches. So the fog is heavy and thick on the table here. 
Thought puts the setup done. Uh, determining who goes first is irrelevant because it's always the heroes in this case, followed by the monsters when you're playing solo. Now in cooperative, you'd either roll or agree, and of course in face to face, you'd roll off to see who goes first, rolling a d20. Each game round, determine initiative for that round, take it in turns to activate a single model, activate the monsters if there's anything in play, and then end the game round. Uh, general rules for this game anytime you roll a 1, it's a fumble, anytime you roll a 20, it's a critical. And then when you activate a model, they can do a movement followed by an action. And those actions are make a range attack, make a melee attack, use your equipment, read a manuscript and maybe die, <laughs> pick up and or drop any number of items from the ground or dead models, drag a down model an inch, interact with loot or scenario items within an inch, and make a move as a second action. Everyone can clear mo uh, obstructions that are an inch tall, um, but the, uh, the obstructions that are more than an inch tall require you to... Uh, have your movement as does climbing. So going up and down into the trenches is gonna cost four inches of movement as they're two inches tall. Going over difficult terrain like uh, this right here will also have your movement. Remember, all range stacks have a 12 inch range because of the fog. It's reduced to nine inches um, because of the, uh, the, the the deep, deep fog that we're currently in. And that means that the flames are only has a three inch range because it only shoots six, which is great. So we're gonna start with, uh, I guess, Putnik Red, and he's gonna walk. Now he has an agility of plus two, and your base movement is five with your agility added, so he's gonna move five inches. So he's gonna go two, four, six, so he's gonna go seven inches, seven to here. At the edge of this. First of two actions, his second one, if he's within nine inches, which he should be, yep, he sure is, he's gonna take a, a shot over here with his pistol. Everything has a name, the stat that it shoots on, its damage, and how much ammo it carries. He can shoot 12 inches using his presence, which is also plus two. Uh, and anytime you want to roll to hit, you got to roll a d20, and you have to roll yourself a um, a 12 or better. So in this case, you need a 10 or better rolling to hit. Now, whenever we fight in melee, it's opposed. Uh, so what will happen, or so they can hit back. So uh, anytime I roll for the bad guys, it'll be with the red dice, and anytime it's the good guys, it's the black die. Is in any way obstructed, you're minus three to your roll, so that would cancel out any bonuses, but this guy's standing in the open from this angle, so we're just gonna take a shot. So Putnik, shooting, needing a 10. We got a 10. Because we managed to hit, uh, we'd have some options if we'd missed, and we could use some orders. Now orders are once per game abilities uh, that the boss can basically do in order to improve people's odds of doing things. You get six at the beginning of any scenario. You can spend them once and only once each at any time, including after a roll for any of the falling effects. So bring it down to deal max damage. Lucky, reroll any dice. Medic, remove a down model from play, which auto passed its death save. Close one, cancel a critical or a fumble. Resourceful, reroll on the loot table. And training, automatically pass one test. Uh, so in this case, we don't need to. We're just going to roll our damage, which is a six out of dice. Uh, he is minus four to damage rolls, though, because he has an armor of four. Full plate armor, which is terrifying. We get nothing. Mark him down a shot. D6s for how many shots are remaining on guys, and then I'll mark them at the end of the game. So he's got four left. Playing versus, that means that I get to pick another character to go, uh, and we're gonna go with the boss. He's gonna move as well. He's gonna move over here. And he's gonna attempt to call in artillery. Pick a point anywhere on the battlefield. Uh, I pick right there. <laughs> we are going to drop a bomb. So I'll use my presence test. I have a presence of plus three, and I need that 12, so it's a nine or better to hit this. I missed. So I'm going to use, I think, my reroll, because if I fail, it's it, it can it can be bad. Uh, I'm gonna use my reroll to try and get that nine. I don't. So now I'm gonna use my other order, which is just to automatically pass. <laughs> Two of my orders now, and this guy gets to find artillery. You're terrible. You and me are gonna have a love-hate relationship there, Mr. No Name, the nameless. Uh, so it's D10 damage. Uh, I could potentially kill him. Uh, but I do four damage, which I'm happy with. He only has three remaining that way. And my manuscript I burned two of my omens with. I don't want to keep doing it because the artillery out of fumble lands on my head. I fumble. If I just fail to cast it, it comes in on my head. It is a horrifying ability. Uh, so I'm probably only using it once per game. Uh, then we're going to go over here to um, Cavill the Lead Slinger. Now he's got a zigzag move. Uh, he can move four inches. He will to here. And then he'll move four again into the trench, but it only gets him the two inches down as he hops down. We're going to go with old Air Mechanic 80. Uh, he's agility plus two, so he moves seven inches, which is great. So he's going to go four, eight, uh, plus four will be to here, which is 12. And then two more is 14 and just zip over. Get close to this guy with the double move. Ah, you know, what? we'll just double move to this corner, actually. We can wait a turn. And then last but not least, Rufo. Uh, Rolfo, Rolfo only uh, moves three. He's very jacked up, so he's going to run six by moving twice. And follow him. 
All five activations, they're all done. So now the hostiles are gonna go. We didn't quite kill this guy. Hostiles activate, they're one at a time. Uh, if there's more than one hostile, randomize them with a roll. So we have to actually randomize which one goes first. And we check their steps. We check if they have a special rule for their behavior. Then check to see if the hostile model can see any other models that is not the same type as it. Hostiles can attack other hostiles. If it cannot, most hostiles, unless specified, remain still and do not activate. If a hostile can see another model then uh, that is not the same as itself, it moves 2d6 inches towards that model. Or if it's equipped with a range attack, it moves d6 inches and takes a shot. Some models are already within 12, in which case it doesn't move at all and then just makes an attack. Shoot the closest on its highway randomize, and if the hostile is within one inch of a model that's not the same type, it immediately attacks in close combat. Take all their tests on a DR-12 with no modifiers unless specified, and this includes that their attacks are targeted by spells. This is also the same for any abilities. Uh, if a hostile is critically hit, it must make a morale check on a 2d6 roll. Uh, if it's greater than its morale, it flees the field, uh, removing 2d6 inches per round until it's gone. D3 closest to furthest, so it will be this fellow right here with the dud grenade um, and the... Um, the heavy armor. Doesn't have a melee attack, so, or doesn't have a ranged attack, so he's gonna move 2d6 towards the closest, so seven. Uh, so that's gonna put him three inches to the edge, four to the bottom, and he's just gonna be at the bottom of the trench right there. He does not have a ranged attack. Uh, then this fellow over here with the darts does have a ranged attack, so he's only gonna move d6, because he can see somebody. He'll move five, so he can freely get up top here, and go five. That will put him up here. Now it's going to get him line of sight to my my, my flamethrower. His aerial dart. Uh, it's D4 damage, agility, ranged, and thrown. It only has a three inch range because of the fog, which goes, or sorry, six goes to three. Um, but he can move and fire it with no penalty. Monster. Uh, so he's got a roll on a 12, uh, but we are obscured, so a 15 because of the trench wall. I already broke my promise of using the red one. Uh, and it hits for D4 damage. Uh oh. He didn't get critically hit at least. Uh, he has armor one because of the improvised armor. Ah, uh, so no damage. That actually would have reduced everybody's movement slightly. Uh, he'd be back a little bit. He'd be back a little bit. He'd be back two, actually. Uh, he'd be still there, because he double moved, and he'd be back two. That's my agility in that armor, <laughs> which we need to replace early. So at least, he doesn't have anyone line of sight, because he can only see nine right now. So he's going to move D6, which is three. So he'll hop down two, and then not quite be able to climb and just sit here. Puts us to round two. Certainly no more using this artillery, because the artillery is, uh, is not going to work very well. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to start by activating you. You can move, but you have to be within three to shoot. So you're going to move, uh, I guess, just up to over one. Oh, no, it costs you four to move there, wouldn't it? Oh, you move seven. What am I talking about? Uh, six, actually. So you could move one, two, and then three to here. That would be six total, because it's four to go up there. Uh, and then we'll fire with our flamethrower. There's three times before it has to be reloaded, but this guy doesn't know how to reload. Also, it's strapped to his back, so that's probably part of why. Passes, uh, so we're hitting on a 12, plus our agility. 14's gonna do it no matter what. It's two, because it is a toughness test to fire the flamethrower, because it's just heavy. Uh, two shots remaining, uh, and he is gonna take D6 damage. He does not have any armor on, so it's just a straight D6 of damage. Passes so morale, he's got four left. But does he burn? He has to make a toughness test. Or uh, it doesn't, actually doesn't matter what the stat is because it's always going to be out 12 for these guys. And he passes, so he doesn't actually light on fire. He wanted to put down my little fire markers and have this guy burn, but he doesn't. <laughs> well, that's going to mean that I guess the boss moves. Now he has an agility of zero, so he just moves five. So he's just going to walk out the edge of this trench and he's going to try and cap this guy with this pistol. 12. Plus his uh, stat, nope, he's gonna miss, but he doesn't lose anything, just runs out of ammo. Putting a Grez gonna go, he's gonna do the same thing. He can walk seven, so he's gonna go four across the duck boards to here, at the edge of this, and also pop a shot with the minus three range. So he'll be down to three shots left. It's a presence shot, so it's plus two, so he hits on a 10. No, also misses. Melee attack, so we're gonna move forward just to be the, the, the brunt of this. It's three inches, so move, move, we'll just get him there. Uh, and then same thing over here, we're just gonna move four. Only move twice. You guys are gonna go get the supplies. <laughs> it costs your whole move to go up a wall because you're wearing this heavy armor. Bad guy time, so randomizing. First one will be five, so the furthest one back, which is you over here. You have no one in line of sight, so you're gonna move 2d6. Uh, which is, you just have a bayonet, which is 10. So you got lots of range. So you're gonna move four inches up to here and then into melee with Putnik. For the bayonet, he will hit on a roll of 12 plus and miss. Putnik will attack back with his bayonet. 
because um, they're both on bayonets, which is funny. Uh, and his is agility, which is plus two. So he's gonna hit on a, uh, when you do a strike back, you're at a penalty of minus three, but he'll be plus two, so minus one overall, so it's a 13. He needs to roll. No, it misses. Three, four to six. One to three, so he's gonna 2d6 roll in, so I, I know I'd make it no matter what over here. And then attack. Dud grenade, if he fumbles, it goes off in his hand, because it wasn't actually a dud. Oh my god. D4 damage, it is the maximum amount, because it was a critical. I'm just gonna cancel the critical effect and make him roll. Because uh, I'm on roll one, I might be able to absorb this. Yeah, I'll absorb the damage instead. So that was my 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 third order I've now had to spend. Fight back with his trench club. Uh, it is strength for his stats, so even though he's minus three and needs a 15, he's plus two, so he needs a 13. Does he hit? 13 he does. He's six damage, but he's minus four because this guy's heavy armor. But he does six, so that's gonna be two damage. He's down to one. So darts first, he's gonna roll d6 and go one. So he's just gonna move an inch and then throw the dart. Clean into Mr. Flamethrower and hit with a five. No, he misses. Puts it into round three. We need to get some of these objectives or we're gonna not have anything to, to pick up with unless it's all said and done. So who's gonna go first over here? We need to finish this guy off. So we're gonna start with uh, Cavill, uh, the lead slinger, and he's gonna he's gonna lead sling this guy with a mace to die. So he is strength, uh, which is plus two, and using his trench club, that's gonna give him a 10 to hit. Does he land it? Nope, he fumbles and drops his weapon. Cancel my critical, so then he gets hit back uh, on a 15 and misses. Well, he's dropped his trench club, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, I guess the boss goes, uh, he can, uh, no, we'll have the flamethrower guy go. He's gonna try and burn this dude. Just aims and fires, he can move seven actually. So he's gonna go around to here and just stand within three and then burn this dude. Shot left, it's toughness, so he's plus two, which means he gets on a 10. Nope. We're gonna go with uh, Putnik, he's got a Jody plus two. He's gonna try and break off on a 10. He does, so he can make a move now. His move is seven, uh, so he's going to go, I guess, four, five to the edge. He can move down for free because it's only an inch, so six to there, and then down again, seven into the trench. And then he'll pop off a shot down to two. He's obscured, which means that he's going to be hitting on a 12, goes to a 15, but then plus his agility, so back down to a 13. Misses and fumbles. Oh no, he jams his weapon. Well, that leaves an open shot for the boss who will climb down slightly, uh, which cost him four. Uh, and then just be in cover here. Uh, he can move one more inch. And he'll take a shot down to two, also into this guy. Plus three, so with the minus three for cover, he's just hitting on a straight 12. He also misses. And then I guess it's time for Rulfus, or Rulfo, the, the, the wounded, to, to do a double move and climb up here. Uh, which is his entire movement. Guys, okay, starting with the closest to my table edge, four would be you, I guess. Uh, you have a ranged weapon, so you're gonna move D6 inches uh, and just throw the dart at the closest guy right here. On 12, uh, you miss. Top, one to three, four to six. It's going to be you, and you're going to have a range. No, you don't have a range weapon, so you go 2D6. You go eight towards the closest thing you can see. So it will be four to get down, and then four to go fight the boss in melee. It's bayonet. On 12, he hits. It's D4 damage. He does one damage to the boss. So the boss has a toughness of, or hitch points of nine, so he's down to eight remaining. And swing back with his knife. Now his knife is a, I believe a agility, which is zero. So he's just hitting on a 15. Nope, he misses. Last but not least, this tank of a man is gonna attack. Uh, he's got his uh, dud grenade. So when a fumble, it explodes and kills him. It doesn't, but he misses. And then we get to fight back. I keep forgetting to get the red dice and miss. I forgot to actually swing with him. Did I hit? I did. How much damage did I do? It's D6. Didn't wound him. Back and hit and did two damage. Also wounded down to eight damage last turn during his own round of fighting, which I completely forgot about. Turn four, we really need to secure some supplies here. And we're gonna. So starting over here, we're gonna move, and then we're gonna loot this thing for an action. Looting is a DR10 test on presence. Now this is uh, presence plus two, so you need eight to do it. On a one on a fumble, I, I cut my hand on a rusty nail, ignoring armor for one damage. <laughs> we fail. Minus one presence over here, so we're gonna move down into cover. Ah, uh, yeah, and we'll try and loot this thing. Uh, so on an 11 this time, because we're worse at it, and <laughs> we fail by one. He's getting melee, so we're gonna hit with this bayonet at plus two, so hitting on a 10. 
because he's a strength test. And he fails by one. Hit back on a 15. No, misses with his bare hands. We're gonna try and club this guy with our uh, trench club. Again, it's on a strength test, so plus two, so 10, misses. He fights back on a 15 and criticals him, no! Uh, so critical with the trench club, or the dud grenade. Four damage, and uh, that means he's gonna take three more and be down to five. Boss can attack, try and stab this guy, or he could break off. He'll break off with his pistol. He does not. He fights in melee. Uh, with his plus two, nope, he misses zero actually. And that's everybody. Ooh, we didn't fight, this is terrible. All right, so random uh, hostile goes first, so furthest to my bench uh, would be you. You're gonna attack Nameless on a 12. Nope, you miss, he fights back on a 15 with his bayonet. He misses as well. One to three, four to six. Uh, four to six, so he'll activate in melee this time around. He has no melee attacks, it's just his fists. So he's hitting on 12. He misses, and then he'll fight back on an 11 with his plus two. That's right, he had 13 with his plus two. Now he misses. Just this one over here, that dud grenade again. Does he critical one more time? No, he fumbles. Oh my god, it goes off and does full damage to him and kills him. That's so funny. Bam! Hits him with it and somehow starts the grenade. That's so cinematic. He criticals this guy with it and hits it hard enough that the grenade blows up in his hands. He blows his own arm off. That's so funny. Um, so it's round five. We're going to attempt to loot this thing again with a DR of uh, 10. He's minus one presence, so 11. He gets it this time. So we get to roll on the loot table. And we get a tower gun with no ammo. All his equipment slots, though, so he can't pick up anything else. Then over here, we'll attempt to loot with his presence bonus. No, he will fail. We're also going to attempt to break off uh, 12 with his agility. He passes. So with his movement of five, uh, he's going to go one inch towards the edge and then four to the top. Like so, and then he's gonna try and blast this guy with his pistol. So he needs a presence test with a plus three. So a nine, he misses with a six. He's got one shot remaining in his pistol. And then we'll move two. And get up close. And finally we'll hit him with our rusted bayonet on a strength test, so he needs a 10, because he's plus two to the roll. He gets it, and that's D8 damage. This guy's got no health, uh, he only gets two though. He's got two remaining. And then he strikes back, hitting on a 15. And his fists, no, he fumbles and drops his fists somehow. All right, fighting back, one to three, four to six. So this guy goes first, so he's just gonna move into melee, with that 2d6 roll, and attack, needing a 12. He crits him again. Four damage, he takes three more, he's down to two. Uh, this guy's been crit three times. I mean, he is the lead slinger. Fight back now on a 13, and hit. Uh, he'll do d6 damage with no modifier, so four. This guy's got three remaining. Final round, we gotta pick some stuff up here, but we're not gonna be able to, unfortunately. We're only gonna get two of these, so you're gonna equip this. You can't, because you have a gas mask, pistol, and bayonet, and you're strength minus two, so you can only carry one of these things. I don't know why I was even trying to loot with you. Uh, you're gonna move back and pick up this one, so at least we have one of these. Crap, we can't. He's strength minus three. <laughs> I think I'm gonna drop any number of items actually. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll drop my knife and I'll pick up this thing because I want to actually have something here. I got a flare gun to pick this up because I'd rather have this than a flare gun. This bayonet and pick this up because again I'd rather have <laughs> another 20 supplies than a bayonet. I'll drop my pistol and knife to pick this one up because that's it. So I'm, I'm dropping a ton of gear but what I get from this should be more than the gear I drop. It's just the fights remaining. So over here we're gonna try and bash this guy uh, with our strength plus two which means we need a 10. Cranked it, uh, and it's d6 damage to the club. Minus one is not enough. So we do actually minus nothing for that guy. Uh, so he's under one. Over here with our mat. Oh, so he strikes back actually on a 15. He hits. Oh my god, for real? That kills him. <laughs> Good job. D4 damage. My bad. Uh, because it is just a bayonet. One. He lives with one left. And clubbing this guy with the rusty bayonet. It lands, D8 damage. He kills him, just barely. It's monster in phase. Uh, we get fought back again, so there's only one guy remaining. He misses. Oh no, he does hit with a 12. Uh, does he get killed? That's a bayonet, which is D4 damage. Will knock him out. We've lost Cavill, he's down. Remember, he's minus one to all of his tests. <laughs> 
In the game, we dropped a ton of gear, but we managed to come back with all of these supplies. We arrive back at the Quartermaster. The Quartermaster will happily hand over your award as you waste no time in opening the supply boxes. Digging in, you see the Quartermaster discard food, bullets, mess tins, and more until he finally holds up his prized loot, a single pair of wool socks. Oh, with the two slain loyal, that's going to be 20 resources. The three containers is another 60, which puts us at 80 resources in the bank. The campaign game, we now have to go through the after action section. Each crew with at least one living member gets paid 10 more resources for taking part, so now we have 90. Uh, then each crew uh, rolls death saves, so it's a DR6 toughness test. Now his toughness is plus two, and he passes with an 11. He has to roll an injury. Uh, the injury table basically tell us what happens afterwards. He passed, he didn't die. He gets a one, lasting injury. Roll for a new flaw in addition to all my other flaws. Fantastic, so now he's, he's broken, he's also... 13. Astrophobia must always wear a gas mask, and he comes with one. Sweet. The worst. A free gas mask is pretty cool. I sell items to the Quartermaster and pays half the cost for weapons and armor, and I can't sell manuscripts. And then I gain an XP per hostile killed, so that's two. Uh, five for the loot I got. Six for the scenario with at least one member surviving. Uh, and then seven for the death save I passed. Spend five of that to do a uh, an increase and take me down to two. I can improve a crew member's ability by one, remove an injury, reroll a flaw, or gain a new feat from a crew member, or bring a crew member back from the dead with a new flaw. I am definitely going to increase in a, a, a strength over here. You need to be able to carry more stuff, buddy. Shopping, we're gonna up equip these guys. So both my melee fighters are getting pistols, which cost me 30. I'm rebuying the pistol for the boss, which costs me 45. They're both getting helmets um, for 55, 66, 67 to give them hardened leathers. Um, and that leaves me with 23 in the bank of my 90. I was just gonna live with their reduced gear until they get strength upgrades because I can't actually pick anything up or buy anything really. For the campaign turn, we're on to mission number two, uh, which is going to be, no, I mean it, find her, get her home. Uh, Nurse Nightshade's gonna have a mission for us for our next adventure. So there you go, into the trenches with The Last War. Now, if you're looking for inspiration for a game like this, I highly recommend movies like, of course, 1917 or Death Watch. If you want to see Andy Serkis before Lord of the Rings when he was not super famous and was in indie horror movies from Great Britain. Um, that that type of like vibe of like like World War One horror, even Dog Soldiers, uh, is a good example of like a, a war horror kind of movie. Uh, there's tons of them out there. Uh, they, they'll give you that kind of idea. Uh, great. Um, Artists, although very, very grim and dark, uh, like Mike Francina, have some great trench war stuff, which is actually being developed into a game right now by Thomas Piernan, um, but was some of the inspiration for me for when I did my sludge armies and stuff. And of course, uh, the whole like Turnip 28 stuff, uh, which Max did uh, ages ago, which is the sort of like um, it, the idea of like a, a bunch of people who've been taken over by root vegetables and fight an endless war in the mud. Tons of artwork out there for all that stuff, tons of great groups. You can check out Blanchetsu style on Facebook. Um, which is a Facebook group of like that same sort of like grim dark sort of grimy 28 style or 28 mag um, as well. We'll give you lots of great information, like inspiration for this from all different genres. But there's tons of like this sort of grimy World War horror vibe uh, stuff out there for you to check out. Um, as far as miniatures, of course, you can check out Knucklebones Miniatures. I'll link them in the uh, video description below. It's also a discount code on my Patreon for my patrons if you want to go check out my mini factory and get some of those figures. Or you can join his Patreon where he is constantly making cool new stuff and updating it too. Um, and of course, if you want to check out Carity Productions, uh, vast now uh, since Forbidden Psalm catalog of cool books on Drive Through RPG, I'll link that too. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more episodes of this in the future. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a great one. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Desperate Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. 
Huge thanks for watching. It really does help out and happy gaming.